This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Or do you yeah, want to... I, you know, I'm happy to maybe do an overview, Jim. Yep, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why you have to sit through the rest of our... <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, um, okay, yeah. so we're submitting um, a, a land acquisition drinking water supply protection project to the CPC for its 76-acre property on Pomeroy Meadow Road in Southampton. Um, and this is a property currently owned by the Courtney family. And we approached them um, within the past year about land protection options um, and reviewing the conservation values for the land. Um, it became clear how important this land was for the recharge area of the Barnes Aquifer and the, the wellheads in both Southampton and East Hampton. And so we're currently applying to a drinking water supply grant through the state. Um, but hoping to also find matching funds through the Community Preservation Act. Um, and so we've submitted a proposal to all of you listing the, the qualities um, of the property for drinking water. Yeah. Uh, this, by the way, is the same process that we did. Um, maybe Jim remembers exactly how long ago it was. <coughs> it was two years, I believe. Hmm? It was two years for Cook, Cook Road and for... Uh, the one on the other end of Pomeroy Meadow. Oh, just last year. Yeah, the upper, uh, lower Pomeroy Meadow Road. Yeah, that was just a year ago. Same process. Same process as we went through. And the same pretty much reasons, maybe a little bit different. But um, yeah. Are there questions that anyone has? So, uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, my my reading of the entire uh, process here is that um, CPC will have to upfront the entire 400 and some odd thousand until uh, Kestrel approves uh, their their portion of what they have to offer. Is that am I correct at that? Well, <laughs> I, isn't it more than that? Um, 443,000. Yeah. No, I mean, yes, we will if, now I don't, uh, my, qu my question is how long do these grants have to take? <laughs> sure, so I think answering both those questions, so it is a, a reimbursement grant, so the state um, requests that mm -hmm. costs be put up front and then once we've secured the property, we would then apply for reimbursement through the grant. Um, the due date for the grant is in a few weeks, March 18th, and then we would expect to hear back around June, about 120 days after we've submitted. And then it's up to you know us to go through the process of the town meeting vote and then closing, hopefully before possibly the end of the calendar year. Um, and then we would submit for reimbursement. So I think the, the proposal should include a, a rough timeline of the project. Okay. Um, if we have not heard on the grant, although we should have, um, the way that we wrote, we've written other grants that are like this is contingent upon receiving the grant. So that um, we would, <clears throat> if we it's to town meeting before we knew it would be written that way. But yes, um, now uh, to mention the funding, um, I have, I'm expecting to get a revenue sheet in another few weeks from the town. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> uh, they have not been giving me the, the printouts every quarter. Uh, I, it's been different at the accountant's office, but I talked with him and he will start giving me the, the same thing that every department gets at the end of each quarter. So I will know exactly how much money is in each of our accounts. 
Um, I'm not worried about the funding. I think we more than have the money. Um, and if we, if we don't, we bonded for the last amount, I think. I know we bonded on one piece of property. Um, so unless some of my committee feel uncomfortable about uh, going ahead with it, not knowing if, if we have all the money right in hand, um, you know, that's, that's an issue. I don't know. Virginia, I'm not, I'm not concerned about whether we have the money available or not. What yeah. concerns me is the way this request from CPC is written. Uh, uh, it's a little bit confusing as to whether if we vote yes right now, we are committing $443,700 to this project, or um, as, the, as the lines further down say here, are you requesting full or partial funds? And they say partial, and they're saying up to $230,000. So are we committing 230 or are we committing 4437? Well, we're committing the larger amount. And I was going to uh, look at that. I think they're committing, we would be committing community preservation funds in that amount because if this will go through, then we will get back. Yeah, we, it's the same thing with the park grant. Yeah, so just on the town meeting, uh, since we won't find out about the grant until June and the town meetings in May, the article for the warrant will have to say, do you, uh, are you agreement of funding 200 and something thousand pending the grant? Or are you willing to fund 400 and something thousand if the grant doesn't come through? So people have the opportunity of voting both of them. And for the Pomeroy Meadow Water Grant, I believe we borrowed against CPC. We didn't bond it. Uh, right. right. Yeah, but we're paying it off. Right, it's just different though than uh, going to, to bond. So, so you're gonna... You're going to want to word it so that we buy the land whether we get the water grant or not or are you wording it so that we only buy the land if we get the water grant i think that's the um that's the choice for people here when we did the uh clearwater woodland it was the same situation it was asking the voters do you want to buy do you want to purchase this even if you don't get the grant or do you want to purchase it only if you get the grant so I think that's what the big question is. And I think that's what Bob is asking. Exactly, exactly, yes. But we have, we have written articles too that say, this is contingent upon receiving the grant. And then we, if they don't get the grant and there is a movement to go ahead and buy the piece of property with community preservation, the total cost. I think that would take another action. Uh, I don't think we can write an article that would cover all bases. I think we can actually, there are two separate articles. Yeah, go ahead, and I Bob. think the, the, way, the way this request is worded, I mean, if we make a motion now, uh, that, that, for example, a motion could say that um, uh, we, we would appropriate the 440 some odd thousand dollars contingent upon yes. receiving $230,000 from the other, the other uh, uh, party. Uh, yeah. So that's one way of getting around this because if contingent upon, if that doesn't come through, then this is invalid. Then, then our vote becomes invalid. Uh, the other way to do it um, is the way Rini suggested is that you go to town meeting with a, um, a two-part uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. See if the voters want to approve uh, funding it even if the grant isn't obtained. Right. I think, yeah. Right. Well, that's one way. <laughs> what I was saying is that we could come back and hear a new proposal for say from open space or somebody 
some other people. Um, this is a whole amount. We then would have to wait again until probably at least, I mean, we, we probably won't have the town meeting after the annual until, oh, you know, yes. Who knows when? Who knows when, right? Yeah, and, 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 and I don't know that the, the seller here is willing uh, willing or able to wait to wait that long. Um, boy. Well, there, uh, it's, I don't think, I don't feel comfortable. I will tell you that. To fully vote this tonight, one way or the other, <laughs> because I'd like for us to know how much money we actually do have, and that I will not get until, you know, I didn't go back in and bother Bradley again. I got all the um, expenses. But I didn't go back in and ask him for all the receipts. Yeah, the, Virginia. The, personally, that 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 has been a, a a very disturbing situation with me. I don't. The paperwork I have, and I I tried to get uh, uh, reports um, along the way, is just um, inconceivable. Is the only way I can put it. I and, and I don't know where we stand. I well, I'll say I can tell I, you. I don't. I don't know that 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 should cloud this particular issue. Uh, I would ask a question of Bridget. Um, Bridget, what's the likelihood that we don't get the the the, the reimbursement? Um, you know, I can't guarantee anything, but I do know the past grant round for drinking water supply. Every grant was able to be funded. It's not a highly applied for grant. So I think we do have a very good chance of getting it, especially the, I think it will rank very highly with the Barnes Aquifer and its other qualities. So I'm, I'm reasonably confident, but of course I can't guarantee anything. So Virginia, would you, would you entertain a motion um, uh, which would say contingent upon uh, receipt of the reimbursement part of it? Would you entertain that kind of a motion or not? Well, yes. Um, and I would even, if, if you're worried about losing this, if we don't get the grant, yeah. um, a second article, not a second part of that article, but a second article, which we would then withdraw if we got the, I think, I think we need some guidance here from somebody else. <laughs> I also think we have to know what the funding source is. So if it's going to be, do you approve 200 and something thousand contingent upon the grant, that's pretty clear. 200 and something that comes from CPC, 200 and something that comes from the grant. But if you're gonna ask the town to uh, put up 400 and something thousand, you have to be clear about what the funding source is, whether it be borrowed CPC or whatever. And and that's, I don't, that's why I'm saying, I'm not sure we don't have to finalize this tonight. I think it would be good to have, yes, we want to make sure to go through with this, the first one. Well, what, what worries me about that, Virginia, is that, that the seller of this property certainly has had other offers. Um, Cindy? Yes. Can you respond to that maybe? Uh, well. I, like Bridget, cannot make any guarantees. Um, Bridget is the one who's worked most closely with this Courtney family, but I will say the Courtney family represented by Mary Beth Courtney came to the Open Space Committee meeting and in my opinion expressed a strong, very strong interest in seeing this property conserved to protect drinking water. She made many uh, comments saying number one, her family felt that way. Number two, that her um, she received the brochure that was produced last year that talked about protecting water. It was produced by the Open Space Committee and you know, good practices to protect drinking water. She thought that was important. Um, she did make it clear that they were approached by a developer mm -hmm. that um, sort of spelled out how that property could be developed, but that they, personally as a family decided not to pursue 
that course development. Um, and I'm going to ask Bridget to speak because she knows them the best. Um, uh, and before I ask her to speak, um, when we went to the water commissioners, and maybe Jim can speak to this, um, one of the commissioners brought up the question of would East Hampton be able to contribute any of this? Because not only does it protect our well, but as noted in the our application, there is protection of an East Hampton well. Once in a while, we have to or, you know, use East Hampton water. Jim can talk about that. But the other thing we were, we've talked about recently is the possibility of a, um, a bargain sale. In other words, would the Courtney family agree to sell it for a lower price and get you know, like a tax deduction re resulting from that? So therefore, some of this is a little, little you know, in, nonspecific. We are worried about timing because Bridget needs to get this application in for like the third yeah. week in March. And we wanted to get on the town meeting vote for May. Yes, there's a lot of question marks. So Bridget, can you add to any of that? Yes, I mean, I can certainly agree with everything Cindy just said. Um, with the family, yes, they are very interested in protection options, especially for drinking water that appeals to them. There, It is, you know, a fair amount of players within the family um, and so Mary Beth has admitted how, you know, refreshing it is that they've all agreed upon it. But I think it also in the background of that is that, you know, if they're waiting too long, then minds might change because there's multiple people involved in the family. Um, I know her brother-in-law, Dennis, was very excited about the potential of a, what seemed like a fast moving timeline to him. Um, and so he was impressed by that. And so I think if we're able to stick with that, that, you know, looks very well for us. Um, and then if we are applying for the state grant for this fiscal year, the, we would need to close by uh, fiscal year 23 with the grant. So June of next year. Yeah. So that brings into timing if, you know, a town meeting got pushed back, that would be a, a pretty tight timeline if we had to wait for another town meeting. Is the land in chapter status? It's not in chapter. Okay. So the, the, the land, um, based on Joe Slattery's knowledge of, he's, he's um, a water commission member. He was our former superintendent and he was a well driller for 30 years. Um, it's direct recharge area for our Glendale well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's good solid uh, water protection land for our drinking water that you know we get. Um, it's less for East Hampton. They're like on the other branch of the aquifer but it's in the same aquifer, mm -hmm. um, you know, and Joe on his knowledge um, believed that the water in that direction flowed directly towards our well. So mm -hmm. uh, it's good land. I, you know, I did probably would, it'd be cool if you could get East Hampton involved, but I imagine that would really complicate things. Um, oh. you, could, you know, 10, 10 more meetings. So last time we worked with them on the um, Cook Road. Oh my word. How many meetings? Yeah. It took forever. <laughs> and and then, uh, you know, having to wait because their community preservation is on a different time schedule than ours. <laughs> they only take, the city council only takes projects every so often, uh, which really kind of messed things up. But anyway, we got it done. Uh, well, well Reedy, Reedy, may may I ask the question here again? Uh, if we're talking about approving this in one way or another here today, but going to town meeting with with a dual proposal, mm -hmm. one of one of which would be um, we appropriate four hundred forty three thousand contingent upon receipt of X number of dollars from the state. Mm -hmm. Number one. Second would be we go to town meeting with one. CPC uh, would fund the entire project for 443,000. So in essence, um, do, do we have to vote on both of those proposals here? I, I believe, believe so. I believe we do. It's, we do. Yeah. And I'm not sure how they get written. Have you any idea, Amy? I'm actually, I'm looking at all the warrants right now. I'm trying to bring up uh, all the past warrants just to show you or tell you how it was done in the past. Uh, Woodland was uh, 
Clearwater Woodland and the uh, just trying to think of when they were. I can tell you how they were written up. But any, anyway, go ahead. I'll look for uh, if people have other questions. Are there any more questions that need answers? Okay. Let's see what comes up here. Are, are you ready for a motion? Um, I guess <laughs> we could have a motion. We don't know how it would be, whether it'd be one, how, you know, the actual wording, if we were going to do both of those. But if you would like to offer a motion, Regina, this is Janet. Is this something that you deal with the coalition frequently and so well to, to ask them for their advice right now? Uh, what, Janet? You deal with the coalition frequently and get really good advice from them? Uh, no, this is not something that we need to ask him about. It's probably more likely that we should ask add Gibson how it should be written up. Okay, I just had a thought. No, no, it's not something that it's that Stuart could tell us what to do. Okay. No, I believe I, I think for us, it boils down to a question of whether we want to go on the line for the entire amount 443,000 or the lower amount 230,000. Um, and, and I don't, I don't, I'm not, I mean, I'm in favor of the project. I just don't know. Um, I don't know how to go about this. Well, we're going to be on the line for the 400,000 for six months or so anyway, or more before we get our funds back. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, so but, but but what I'm saying is, if we we make a motion now to say that we'll fund this project for four hundred forty-three thousand dollars, and it goes to town meeting, and town meeting says okay, we'll we'll go along with funding it for four hundred forty-three thousand dollars, and we don't get a a state reimbursement on it, we're on the line for the entire project. That's right. And maybe and maybe we want to do that. I don't know. But won't we know before town meeting whether we got the grant or not? No, actually, um, I think she just said June and town meeting is in okay. May. Okay. I have the uh, motion up that was uh, for the Pomeroy Meadow Road uh, water parcel. It says the project's purpose is to acquire and preserve 14.4 acre parcel off Pomeroy Meadow Road for the town, including 3.2 acre lot 2E under the first rider first refusal. This would protect the property as it has been deemed critical to the recharge area of the town's drinking water well by a geology study and has been requested to be preserved. And then it says the town has been awarded, see at that point, I think we already knew, the town was awarded a $216,000 drinking water protection grant. So then the voters were asked to um, fund 660,000 actually to acquire, yeah. As, as I remember, we did know in advance that the- Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we didn't for Clearwater Woodland though. We were waiting on the grant. It wasn't the park grant, it was the land grant. Yeah. And we didn't know it. So we had two articles or a contingency where it said, we'll approve it with the, you know, if we get the grant at a lower amount, we'd approve it for the whole amount. And I'm pretty sure the entire amount came out of CPC. Mm. I don't, I'd have to look back to see what the warrants. Anybody remember what year that was purchased? Cindy, do you? I think that was purchased in 18. Okay, the, uh, the, the warrant I'm looking at right now actually is 2019. Oh, was 19. Okay. No, the water protect, the Pomeroy Meadow water was 19. Well, Glendale preceded it. So that's why I said 18. Uh, right. That we paid for completely. Right. And then the town took a bond out because we had to we had to bond for it. 
Yeah, the timing wasn't quite right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the, and if I remember correctly, the sellers of Glendale um, agreed to, I mean, because there was the whole timing with coming out of chapter and, and all the, the time constraints, they were in agreement with working with the town so that we could get all that done uh, in a longer period of time than it would have for just generally taking, you know, buying land coming out of chapter. Um, do you have that motion? Because I think that had three parts to it, didn't it? That motion on that town meeting? Yeah, I don't have it handy, actually. Um, I don't remember. So maybe we need this to be the discussion meeting. We need to get... Yeah. We need to yeah. get a clear understanding of what the account balances are for CPA, mm -hmm. the CPA account balances. And um, I think the timing would still work. You got to put the grant application in anyway, don't you, um, Bridget? And yeah. then when, Rini, is the deadline for submitting for the warrant in oh. order for KP Law to review it? Yeah. And Robert Floyd would probably be the one to be clear about that i think it's about two weeks about you, two weeks before do you want me to text chris Fowles to see if she knows um uh, you know i think we have time perhaps yeah i think there's time uh if, to have a meeting in about two weeks to finish, yeah uh, to complete this and that um, gives us time to do some questioning so i wonder if tonight and maybe this isn't even necessary, but can there be like a good faith motion that CPC is, you know, theoretically in support of this grant? We we can't specifically stay say make a motion based on numbers at this point. I mean, I I, I want to make sure because I'm supporting the project very strongly that if there's somebody that isn't feeling um, positive about the acquisition. I mean, this is so critical for our drinking water. This is absolutely one of the most critical acquisitions we can get in town. Um, I just wonder if there's anybody that wants to say anything that concerns them about the acquisition. Um, I'd raise, I mean, we just got such strong support at the Water Commission meeting. Uh, and it is, I'm, I'm hearing from Bob and I'm hearing from others. I think that this, you know, theoretically we are in um, support of, of seeing this conserved. For our I, protection of our water. I think the motion might be something to that effect. Um, with the clear understanding that we're going to gather information about our finances and all. Okay. And in two weeks, make a decision. That still is plenty of time to deal with getting it written up and all that. Okay. So therefore, uh, I, I, oh, go ahead, yeah. Bob. Go ahead. I, I, I agree with you. I think it's, it's just it because we really don't know what our uh, fund financial position is. Um, we, we really don't know whether committing $440,000 is a major uh, activity or whether it is a so-so activity. Um, yeah. And that's what kind of bothers me. I mean, I'm, again, totally in favor of the project. And I might even be in favor of it at 443,000, uh, but I'd like to know where we stand financially before we commit to that. Well, I think the issue was uh, the difficulty with closing without, you know, people in the accounting office closing out the books. And then we hired a firm to close out 20, you know, uh, the previous fiscal year. And that just finished. So um, I'm happy to send an email to Ed, just letting him know that we need to have the account balances, unless Virginia, you've already been, you're already on that. But we certainly need to get those figures within the next two weeks, and then we can decide. If you think there's enough time, we just have to make it clear that we need all those account balances in the next two weeks. Well, um, I could, but if you want to, you're probably more in contact with, I think the request needs to come Ed needs to know about this. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to send him an email, but I think that was what the holdup was: was the closing of the books, and that has happened now. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, and I know that um, I got a much nicer little 
financial report, but it didn't include our revenues, our other revenues. It only uh, included active accounts. Um, and that was very helpful, but it didn't give us our revenue. Well, so, I, I requested a report in early January, and I think well, we discussed this the last time we had a meeting, and that report uh, that I got from the town accountant, and Ed was up there with me at the time, uh, was dated 12-31-21. And, and it, it, it's a report that I just don't even know what the heck it's all about, because it shows yeah. mm -hmm. that we had $9 million in the CPA undesignated account. So, well, I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> um, there, there were a lot of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> We even had worse ones, and I think they got left uh, because there was an error with the changeover even. So I'm not counting any of those. I'm just, um, and I'm also knowing that we got, um, with the two, our last year's income. And the state grant, we have uh, over $550,000 that was last year's income kind of thing. Um, and, you know, it that was spread out across the three areas. But, um, and I haven't really seen how that was, that how, how that has played out. But I'm not and we keep getting money in with every tax, every uh, tax um, because of the town is putting money in. Um, right. So it's not like, um, but he's going to give me the kind of thing that we used to get, I used to get every quarter, but he didn't realize that I should be getting one of these well, the departments did. And that's okay. He's new. <laughs> He's trying. Mm -hmm. So I can make a motion okay. uh, now if, if everybody's, well, I'm going to make a motion. So I move to um, have the CPC support the acquisition of this property and pending um, further understanding of the, the financial status of our funding. Uh, and that's my motion. Okay. Is there a second someplace? Somebody want a second? A second. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? Can you repeat the motion, please? I move that CPC support the acquisition of the 76 acre Courtney property for uh, drinking water protection. Uh, and this motion is pending an understanding of our financial status. We need this I, well, that's pretty important though. I'm a little concerned that that <sighs> commits us to approving some sort of dollar future motion that has a dollar value to it. I, I, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I'm in support of the project, but I'm just worried about um, signing on to something without knowing the um, amounts and the accounts and yep. what other, is there anything else that's already committed that we don't know about other than the Labrie Field um, house? Uh, is there anything else that we need to know about, Virginia? Uh, well, the brief field funds were already voted. Right, but they're still sitting in the account because of the bidding was so far off. Yeah, I know that, that there will be some things there. Um, what else do we have to pay? Well, we have the, um, of course, that debt uh, from the bonding. But that's, I think, about the only thing we've got out there. Pickleball and, courts. And pickleball, the, right. oh, the pickleball courts, I think, are pretty well taken care of. I think you're right. 
Um, oh, the other one is the park grant. Yes. Those are the two. Right. So. I'd almost personally prefer to, uh, I mean, I'm supportive of both levels of this, but I just feel like I, you know, I think that we need to have all the figures. So uh, I think it's, re if it's reasonable and you think there's plenty of time to just do this in two weeks. And I think, you know, we'll, you know, appreciate the folks from Kestrel being here and all. I, you know, I think that we just need to have the figures to be able to make a decision about it. Um, for, your, for your information, I don't know if it does any good or not. But the last report that I can make any sense of uh, was received on uh, June 10th of 2021. And in that report, it showed that um, the CPA undesignated account had a balance of $860,000. Uh, open space had 60,000. Historical had 70,000. And community housing had 414,000 balances. Again, that was as of last June. Well, uh, June of 21. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. That, that's take it for what 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 that is. Um, I, I don't think we voted on any large expenditures except the park grant. And now this one would be the second one. There was a 20,000 for the canal. And there was another small one. Right. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not concerned about the money, but I think we need to, in some way, say that we as a group either support in theory right now, until we have more facts, we are supporting this project. Uh, that's the kind of thing I'd like to see. Just if they, the knowledge is out there that this committee is behind this piece of property. And I think, Cindy, yours kind of does that, doesn't it? I'll, I'll repeat it. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think there was a second, but didn't, I, I don't think so. Oh, there but was a second. There was? Yes. Okay. Sierra. Oh, correct. Sorry, Sierra. Sorry. Yep. So it's it said CPC supports the acquisition of the 76 acres um, of the Courtney property um, for water protection pending an understanding of our financial status, of CPC's financial status. Is there a second? Um, it's seconded. Sierra already seconded, I think, yeah. So, um, are there any more comments or questions? Well, let's go to a vote. Those in favor? Uh, I think you need to say your name and which way you're voting. Uh, Palmer, uh, aye. Brown, aye. Roden, aye. Goes a bye. Others, Janet? I said yes. Yes. Okay. Um, any any nays? Any abstaining? Okay, that passes. And let me check my calendar. <laughs> I'll give you the date that works for me. Maureen, while we're waiting, mm -hmm. uh, the last selectman's meeting, you were talking about soliciting names that might volunteer for the finance board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jim Kelly, president of uh, Polish National Credit Union. Yeah. Uh, he might be asked. Okay. <clears throat> what I did was went through the street listing and I came up with 56 people who are either bankers, financial, this accountant. Yeah. And, and uh, so let me see if he's on the list here. Cause I had, I just opened it up. Kelly is his name. Yeah. Jim mm -hmm. Kelly. Okay. He lives on Hillside. 
Hillside, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. And then there's a there's the man that lives um, on East Street, the, the the third house in. I think it's number seven. I think he's a uh, he is a he manages a brokerage firm or something. Mm -hmm. hmm. Just a couple names for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you don't know his name, do you? Mm, look up number seven East Street. He's got, a, he's got an ad on the radio all the time. Yeah. Yeah, seven East Street. Oh, I, oh that house, yeah. Your house. Your house, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you. Uh, October, uh, yeah, October. Uh, what's next month? March 9th. Did that work? Good for me. I probably can't make that out, the traveling back um, from a trip then, but I'm sure Mark could replace me. Okay. I have to be on another meeting at six, but if we're just doing a vote, that would be enough time, right? Or is that a regular meeting with uh, count balances and all that? Well, we'd have to have that information, but yeah. yeah could, we make, could we make the meeting start at five possibly? Give us a little longer, so. Yeah, I think we need more than 30 minutes, but an hour should be enough. That would help. Yeah. Five is good with me. Okay. We well, mentioned last month and maybe we might not do Zoom, Zoom the next time, might do virtual uh, actual meeting in the town hall. Are we going to think about that? Um, I'm not sure it works for everyone as well. Might as well just continue with the Zoom. I think uh, is that an, um, good for everyone, the Zoom, if it works? <laughs> Certainly convenient. I mean, whatever works for other people. I, my six o'clock meeting is a Zoom meeting, so I could jump on anywhere. Either way is fine, but you're right. Zoom is convenient, at least at this point. Yeah. Okay. Let's set that date, and then we will take this up. <laughs> so it's 5.30 on March the 9th in a Zoom. Correct? Five o'clock. Okay. I mean, pardon me, five o'clock, right. I'll send an email to Ed and also Robert Floyd, just uh, confirming the date that the warrants do buy and also just encouraging them to, that we need the balances, uh, you know, by hopefully the beginning of that week at the very latest. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you, everyone. And I think we probably are ready to go back to our other agenda. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Bridget. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, people that came. <laughs> Extra for this. Um, I, I actually have a seven o'clock meeting, uh, master plan implementation. So uh, let's see, do we have a, are we gonna have enough of a, a, a quorum. quorum? Thank you, <laughs> quorum. <laughs> If, if I will text Chris Fowles if I have to be late, but yeah, should we keep trying? Yeah. Um, who's here? Uh, we've one, two, three, four, five. I think there's six of us at least. There is. There are six committee six. members, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go to our business. <laughs> If I can find that one. So the first is to accept the minutes of the last meeting, and there is one correction that has to be made. Um, the pollinator garden, which was information, right, Cindy? It wasn't a big, let's get going on this. Yeah, I, quite frankly, um, I think we're premature to discuss this. Because I, I because the uh, all the bids quotes I should say quotes have not been received. The deadline for receiving the quotes is March one. Well, uh, there's no reason to talk about it because we don't have the land left yet. You're, well, that that was tied in with the purchase of the land. No, uh, that would be on the water. 
water land, which is already owned by our town. Oh, their land. Uh, well, let's just take that off. I uh, think we could we could hold off and talk about that at a later meeting. Yeah, but it does. We do want to see that on the um, on the warrant for for May, if we can. Oh, I've got sad news for you. How does it fit? Say that again. How does it fit into what community preservation can do? I thought this was in tangled up with the new piece of property. No, it it's meant to uh, it's meant to be built on the. Uh, water protection property on Lower Palmer Meadow down towards the school. Oh, uh, I don't see any place where they can send a, a project to us for that. Really? Yes. Huh. Um, open space is water protection, land protection, et cetera. Um, then it's recreation, housing, and historical. And I went through the whole thing with open space, and it's all around land, water, and things like that. So okay, the fact that the town signed the Monarch Pledge, which of course is part of it, we want to have it have be part of this be monarch friendly. That um, couldn't be part of it. Hmm. It, I, it, I'm sorry. I okay. This was in connection with the other, and was, so we could should take that completely out of the. It, it really sounded well. It says Conroy Meadow there, and I just assumed it was the new property that they were looking at, and that it still wouldn't fly there. And the other thing I got a, and and. Other than that, the minutes look fine to me. The other thing that I got too, well, let's accept the minutes first. Um, I have another correction. Oh. Just to my section, the Ms. Simmons housing section. Yep. Um, it says, Ms. Simmons reported the committee is working on the housing plan, which has become a much larger project than contemplated. I think that's, I think there were two ideas there. So one, the committee's working on the housing production plan, um, which is pretty much done. We just saw the final version. And the project that was larger than contemplated, I think that must be referring to the, um, the uh, development project um, on Route 10 that uh, Todd, Todd Barron and uh, Bob Cannon are doing. I think that's must be what the second part of that sentence is referring to, but it's, it's two separate thoughts. Sierra, how would you like to word it, please? Um, I would say Ms. Simmons has uh, reported the committee is um, nearly complete with the housing production plan. How is housing production plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, and honestly, you could just take out the rest of it because um, I'll give a new update on that project today anyway. Oh. Or if you just would like to send me what you would like for me to say on that housing paragraph, I could do that. The housing production plan, and then just take the rest out. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Those in favor? You can just say aye. 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 Any, any negative? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, next thing, let me get my agenda. Um, okay, I guess, um, Sierra, do you want us any more information? I trust that you'll have more later. Yeah, it is, it is basically that we'll have more later. So um, the last I heard from Todd about the development project, was February 2nd. Um, he said that they found out something new. It's in a, a MADEPS zone two, which restricts the sewage disposal options. And so they were meeting with a contractor to rethink the whole thing about um, a septic system. And so, yeah, the report from that is once again that we're awaiting follow-up from them. Okay. Um, 
And um, do we have any information about the park grant? Uh, they're supposed to be working on the plan for the park, but I haven't heard anything more. The design, has to, they have six months to do the design. We'll need to follow up on that too. Um, okay. Um, well, I guess that's about it, unless somebody has new. Uh, I have a quick question for you. Um, has anybody approached you about CPC funds to repair the fence at the cemetery? <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> they would have to be restoring it, not fixing it. Well, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is on the National Historic I know. National site. So I did ask Ed Gibson to contact the Cemetery Commission because uh, pretty soon they'll probably start working on the sidewalk in front of the yep. cemetery. And so I thought it would be a good time to find out from his um, the cemetery. Terry Cemetery Commission, what their plans are for that fence. I haven't heard back from Ed yet. Okay. Yeah, I knew that, Rennie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any Virginia, can you can you go back to old business? Yeah. Which old business? Me. <laughs> oh, the house? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Tammy Walunas, uh, Historical Society President, I want to thank the um, Southampton Community Preservation uh, Committee for helping us. Um, we have a new roof on um, the Clark Chapman house and the carriage house and the barn and the shed. And um, we have a new foundation in and um, everything went Everything's done. And we spent all but 44 cents. <laughs> 3000 So I thank you so much for helping us with this. And we look forward to having all of you come to our Clark Chapman House Festival that we have when we open back up for the public. Well, thank you for all the work you did on this. Well, it's, we have a whole new septic system now there. And um, so some other things happened because of the work being done, but it brought in some other um, townspeople that didn't realize that we're all volunteers there doing all this. So they've come in and started helping with other things and it's, it's really, um, it's kind of moving to see that these other people are, are stepping up and helping with different parts. Um, so it, it's truly been a really, a really good experience. Good, good, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you guys helping us out and um, helping uh, keep our artifacts safe. Yes. I don't know what you're going to do with the 44 cents. <laughs> Give it back. Give it back. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you so much. You're, that's wonderful to hear. Um, is there anything else that really needs to come before us tonight? Any new business updates or anything? Well, do I hear a motion? <laughs> Janet, you, I mean, Virginia, you run a good meeting. It took a little while getting off the ground, but we, it happened. Oh, so I move to adjourn. That's a dead. Okay, those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yeah, I really, I don't know what went wrong. But you did it anyway.
Sorry, we did. Yeah, I think it had something to do with Tuesday, 2 22 <laughs> a day late. <laughs> okay, well, we're on for two weeks from tonight. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.